Well, thank you very much indeed, David. It is indeed a great pleasure to be here again, again sponsoring uh, the presentation of Beaver's Manifesto for uh, 2015. Um, I think that I've done this almost throughout the course of the last five years, and I hesitate to ensure that I should not repeat what I've said on previous occasions. But I will say one thing, which is that of all of the trade bodies that there are, Bieber is one of the most effective. I say that not just because I'm invited to make some remarks and I'm following uh, your distinguished lead, but because the concept of producing a manifesto and outlining to parliamentarians, both in the House of Commons and in the House of Lords, the issues as they are seen by the broker community in the UK is hugely helpful for us as members of Parliament. But this time around, the manifesto is slightly different. Um, since I chair the All Party Group, may I just say, although I have noted that the cover is in blue, on which I make no comment, uh, on the inside there's a sprinkling of yellow and there's a sprinkling of red as well, which, which, which either means that there's a recognition that there are messages in here for all political parties, or it means that Bieber expect that there's bound to be a coalition of some sort after the next uh, uh, election. Uh, however, However, what is different about this <coughs> manifesto, I think, is it's not so much a call to action for politicians in the next parliament. It's a call to action for our political parties in the forthcoming general election itself. And I think that that is very helpful, Steve. It is very good that those who are drafting the manifesto see specifically what the messages are from Bieber. And there's one other thing that I want to say, particularly at a time when I looked at the attendance list for this reception today in which yes we've got parliamentarians from the Lords and from the Commons, we've got representatives of the broker community but we've got so many of your stakeholders, your stakeholders in government, your stakeholders in other public bodies and also I have to say looking around just about everybody who is anybody in terms of the insurance trade press. So this is you know if the devil's casting his net today, right, he could just about um, clean up in terms of British insurance by attacking the people who are sitting in this particular room. Anyway, uh, what, I th what I think that I want to say finally about this is that what the document represents are messages that are not just about the profitability of the industry. They're not just industry messages. They are also a recognition of the importance of the customer. And there are as many messages in this manifesto that are directed to improving customer outcomes as there are things that the industry would find helpful. And that's exactly the agenda that we as parliamentarians support. It's exactly the agenda that the FCA have been promoting. And isn't it therefore very, very refreshing to see that this document actually comes with a commendation from the chairman of the FCA himself. I think that is a first. I've, I've not recalled an occasion when an industry document is able to say that. So it is a very great pleasure, albeit for the last time, for me to say uh, it's, uh, it's a document that will set out the insurance battleground at the next election. Uh, and it's a very, very great uh, pleasure to be followed by, the, uh, uh, by, by Andrea Leadsom, who I think has proved to be an outstanding minister and who, of course, has responsibility for insurance, so is exactly the right person to ensure that these messages at least appear in one of the political parties' uh, manifestos when they're published. Thank you very much. Indeed.